Who's reading comic books today? Well, nowadays we have more people reading comics in America than ever before. Uh, more different types of people, more men and women, more children and adults, and more people of different backgrounds interested in different subjects. So in some ways, the North American market is becoming more like both Europe and Japan has been for a while. We, we've envied the variety of the kinds of comics and kinds of readers there. So um, we're, we're glad to see that evening out a little. Diversity is always a good thing. You've written often on the visual impact of comics. Could you explain a little bit about that? Just what visual impact do the different styles have, whether it's a, a round style like Kathy or the Peanuts, as opposed to something dark and mysterious like Swarm or, or uh, some of the more violent Punisher comics or some of the independents. Could you explain a little about that? Well, you know, comics tells its stories in many different ways. We use a lot of different art styles, a lot of different formats. The reader stops noticing. After they've read a couple of panels, they just pay attention to the stories and the characters. But all of those styles are affecting their perception of the story in subtle ways. Uh, the way characters are drawn, the way they're designed, and just the general formats can give something a more dynamic air or a more humorous air. Um, all of these things matter, and that's why I think it's important sometimes to explore new formats and see what new ways uh, of communicating comics there are out there. Many of the heroes have become much more anthropomorphic over the course of time, uh, darker, much more, um, much more human, if you will, with tortured lives, tortured souls. Do you think that with an audience of, of young readers that may not have the emotional uh, ability to cope, with many of the stresses of life. Do you think this is teaching them how to cope, or do you think that this is something that may, uh, may hinder that a bit? Well, when I was starting out, that's when superheroes were really be beginning to become more like ordinary people. I think part of that may have actually just been because there were other kinds of comics out there, like the underground comics, that were challenging this idea of the perfect protagonist. There are people who didn't trust the idea of a perfect protagonist. They thought, no, let's... Let's write about people's problems. People have flaws. People are not perfect. And that's more interesting. And so uh, the, the superhero comics began to learn from that. And you saw people like Peter Parker, Spider-Man, had really ordinary problems. But there are other characters who had no superpowers who had plenty of ordinary problems. And that was happening in the underground and alternative markets. And now I think many, many cartoonists in America and elsewhere, they find just ordinary people with ordinary jobs and ordinary relationships to be every bit as an interesting as somebody who can fly over a building. Uh, so the real world has been invading comics in many different ways from many directions, I think, for the last 20 years. So do you think the comic books are offering a lot of hope to people? I think it's hopeful to know that somebody whose problems are down to earth and like your own are worth telling stories about. The idea, just by showing a spotlight on somebody who has an ordinary job, living an ordinary life, and saying, this person is worth a story. This person is worth our attention. This person is worth our sympathy. By saying that, we're also saying to the reader that that reader is also worth interest. Everybody is a story in their own life. At the fair, the new uh, Batman is being introduced as being with the setting of Barcelona. <laughs> Do you think it's possible for a, a superhero to be taken out of his normal environment? Batman in Gotham City or Superman is always associated with Metropolis. Do you think that they'll be just as effective if they're put in a different, a different city? Because the city in each of those comics has become very much a part of the superhero's identity. Well, you know, every character has their home city, their home stomping grounds. I like the idea of, of local heroes and local characters, uh, real places. Um, so I like the fact that when Spider-Man came out, Spider-Man was set very much in New York City, the actual New York City. And they, they, it was more rich that way because the artists and the writers had specific places in New York that they could identify with. Um, likewise, with that Batman coming to Barcelona, now that Batman you know, has his city, has Gotham City, uh, the idea of traveling is more meaningful. You know? Now it's like, ah, this character from this place has come to our place, and, and you can now see that place with new eyes. Somebody from Barcelona now maybe can see their own city with new eyes because they have this famous character is traveling there and seeing the city as somebody would coming for the first time. Uh, maybe there should be a hero based in Spain coming to New York. Maybe New Yorkers could see their city through new eyes. What do you think about the recent canonization of the American president? Obama is being uh, set in a retrospective of comics from all over the world. 
I think, well, the, the bar was set very high for Obama from the beginning, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't envy him now because he, it would be very difficult for him to not fall from grace at some point. Um, it's a tough job. Uh, and so I, I, the, the, the Obama comic book, I think, is the least of Barack Obama's problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, handed them the, we handed him the keys to a burning building. Uh, it's, it's a, he's going to have his work cut out for him, I think. So do you think that um, with, with um, all the, the new advances in, you know, in, um, in comics, just the different directions that it's been going in, would you say that it's rewriting a new humanism almost? Well, yes. Well, of course, um, our whole conception of ourselves is changing with technology. Um, comics is just part of that. Um, but I hope it'll be an important part in the future. You know, the media that we tell stories through uh, should be as free and as clear and as expressive as possible so that those stories are received with enough power uh, so that people can communicate their dreams for the today and the past and the future. Um, I think comics can do that. I think comics can convey that. Movies and books and plays have always contributed to our vision of ourselves and of, of humanity and of technology and society. I think comics should do no less. I think we should be able to join that um, community of the arts. Well, it, it's always fun to, to take comics out for a drive and take it someplace it's never been. I mean, exp explaining for Google the inner workings of their new browser, Chrome, was uh, a real challenge. And it required a completely different process than anything I've done before, where we interviewed engineers for, um, I think, about 20 hours worth of interviews with Google's engineers about the technical guts of this browser and then trying to make that uh, understandable by people, that was a really interesting challenge. And I'm, I'm happy to say it seemed to go pretty well. Most people found that they were able to understand how the browser worked on a level that they wouldn't have if it had just been prose. Um, so I wouldn't want to do it all the time because I like telling stories. And my next project is a graphic novel. So um, I don't want to only explain things in comics form. I also want to tell stories like all cartoonists. But, uh, but that, was a, that was a good challenge. And that's something I think comics should do more of. I mean, if nothing else, it means more cartoonists will be getting work, which is fine with me. I've never been wedded to pen and ink. I actually enjoy working digitally. Um, and I embraced that as soon as I was able. In fact, I, um, uh, I now draw entirely digitally. I have a, a tablet that allows me to draw directly on the screen. Um, there's no paper at all in what I do anymore. I think there'll still be paper comics. Um, but I think that probably the quickest, easiest way for a creator of comics to connect with an audience will probably be the web moving forward. But print is still beautiful. Print still offers the tangible quality of paper. And um, what's happening now is the people who feature printed comics are thinking more about what strengths print has and emphasizing the texture and the color, the feel, the weight, um, the, the sensation of print because there's an alternative now. So I think that's all to the best. When I started out, print well, it just wasn't as beautiful. People didn't pay attention to the production of print. Now they do.